Hi, Southern Shadi here, and as an independent content creator and filmmaker, I understand the challenges associated with trying to produce entire scenes by yourself. So I'm always looking for tools, techniques, and things to improve my pipeline to produce these scenes quicker. That's why I'm so excited to partner with NVIDIA on this video. Using the Adobe Creative Suite of apps, plus AI tools, and RTX accelerations powered by NVIDIA Studio, I can get my work done faster and iterate quickly, turning my one-man shop into a creative powerhouse. We'll be talking about tools like Adobe Photoshop, neural filters and generative fill, Substance 3D Sampler's AI image to material tool, Adobe Firefly image generation, and more. Let's dive in and look at ways I'm using these tools to create larger scale projects as an independent artist. Now, one big challenge I had recently was this montage. I go through a variety of environments and I wanted to create a bunch of handcrafted worlds that fit my style. And I actually came up with an amazing little workflow technique that I'm really excited to share with you, but I'm gonna show you that later in the video. First, let me show you some of the other things I did to kind of speed up my workflow. Now, from an art direction standpoint, I tried to keep simpler objects and focus more on kind of color and shapes to really fill out these scenes rather than creating overly detailed props. So I ended up relying on my textures to deliver a lot of that detail. But one tool that I really love is the AI powered substance sampler tool that allows you to convert an image to a PBR texture. So I could import images of textures or what I like to do is actually import a lot of hand painted textures give them a depth map, a roughness map, a normal map, and put those into my scenes. And then I can create almost a hand painted look, but with a much more efficient timeline. Now I kind of had a material pack that had my fingerprints on it that I could use to quickly fill out these scenes. So for my hero elements, so foreground props and environmental set pieces and my characters, I brought those over to Substance Painter using the materials I created in Designer Sampler combined with some that I already had from Adobe. I was able to use those with smart masks and smart materials to quickly begin adding a lot of detail, texture, and story to all these environments so that even though I had these simple shapes, I had a lot of materials that matched my style and I had a lot of story built into these textures while still maintaining a relatively quick pipeline. Now, of course, all of this was sped up by the fact that I'm working on an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series GPU. And what I love about this is that it is so fast, I can pretty much preview my entire scene all the time in the cycles render preview. So I can do all of my lighting, my textures and everything and have a really good idea of what my final results going to look like before I ever hit render. So back to that technique I promised to teach you about more before. This actually came about as a solution to this sequence right here. As I rapid fire through this montage, each one has a different environment, suggesting that our main character is progressing on her journey. However, I didn't have time to create full fleshed out environments for each one of these shots that would only be seen for half a second or a second, so I needed to get a bit creative. Now I'm gonna hop over to Adobe Firefly. In Adobe Firefly, let's creators use text prompts to make assets from Adobe stock imagery to inspire and support their work and is powered by NVIDIA GPUs in the cloud. And I'm going to generate a fantasy mushroom forest. And it's going to give me some four options here, but what I love over here is how simple to use these tools are. So I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm going to change this to widescreen so that I can use it to fill out my background. I'm going to change this to art, and then I'm going to change this to digital art. I love this color and tone option here because I can set it to a warm tone. And for the lighting here, I'm gonna set it to the golden hour. Now for the composition, I'm gonna go ahead and set the wide angle. Now, if I click generate here, I'm going to get some various options here. Perfect, so I'm starting to get a bit more what I want. So I'm gonna come down here and play with the prompt, adding in a few more details, kind of describing the red mushrooms and things until I get something I'm happy with. Great, so after playing, I've gotten some images that I like, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick one of these images. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one here, and then I'm going to download this and bring this into Photoshop so that I can make this fit my style and scene a bit more. Now, first what I'm gonna do is take this image here in Photoshop, and I'm actually gonna use the generative fill to get rid of some of these ones that I don't necessarily want. For example, I don't really want this kind of broken looking fantasy mushroom. So I'm gonna go ahead, just generate over that and clean up my image a bit. Great, so after doing that a few times, I've kind of gotten this to a place I'm a little more happy with. Now what I'm gonna do is actually combine some of my elements into this scene. So what I'd like to do is put the castle back here. Now the castle is a big part of my short film as it is a focal point in the background of a lot of the shots. And I wanna ensure that that is true here as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead, drag this castle in here and place it where I would like it to go. I'd like it to kind of be blended in right around there. Now I'm going to come up here to the filter, neuro filters. Now over here, there's a lot of these neuro filters. We're going to be coming back to use this depth blur one. I feel like not enough people are talking about the power that this one has. But one thing I like to do whenever I'm combining elements is come here to the harmonization, click that on there, and then I select my art layer there. And what that's going to do is just help color match this to the scene a bit better. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and use a layer style with a color overlay. I'm going to go ahead, grab this back here in the scene. I want it to look a bit shadowed and then just maybe blur that out just a tiny bit there, lower the opacity. I'm just going to go ahead there, right click, rasterize this layer, and then I'm going to hit filter blur and just do a Gaussian blur and just get this a bit blurred out. So it's kind of matching the background. Perfect. Now what I want to do is get this to blend into my scene a bit better. So I'm actually going to use the Adobe Generative Fill again to help blend this in. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of paint out some of these foreground elements, just grab a big chunk and then click Generative Fill, take out that guesswork there. And now you can see how it is beginning to blend into the background. Now, the last thing I want to do is go back to those neural filters. But first, what I'm going to do is grab everything here, just combine that into one layer and bring that over to the neuro filter. Now the neuro filter has this amazing tool called the depth blur. And what it's intended to do is that you will turn it on and then you can add depth to your scene. However, what you can do is you can actually flip this and output the depth map only. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my focal range. I want these up here to be in focus. So I've set mine to about 14 there and that's a pretty good result. Now what I can do is click output depth map only. Now I can take this into Blender and use this to drive the displacement map and create some depth. So I'm going to go ahead and export this as a new layer. And then now I'm going to export both of these as PNGs and bring those into Blender. Now, if you'd like to see the full process of how to implement this depth map in Blender, check out the full tutorial on my channel. But let's take a look at how it looks in the scene. You can see that we have some good depth back there and that the lighting is affecting this and that we can move the camera through the scene ever so slightly and still get some depth from our images there while still kind of maintaining that creative control overall. Now, if you're not already familiar, I recommend you check out tools like the NVIDIA Omniverse, which is a platform that enables individuals and teams to link creative apps to streamline creative processes. I'm always excited about the tools that they're adding. They're very artist friendly and kind of support me in my creative process to help me produce the images in the scenes that I want to as an independent creator effectively.